Hydrocephalus, the giant headed baby. Let's see the cause behind it, the pathophysiology. Increase in CSF volume and pressure causes ventricles to dilate and as the ventricles dilate, the head expands. And as we know that in a growing baby, the sutures of the skull aren't close and are also loose, hence the head expands. Although increase in the volume and pressure of CSF has many reasons, we will deal them in a moment. Hmm, now I understand why my head is big. Here is the catch, that although the head size is big, but the brain is of same size as normal. <laughs> Coming to the type of hydrocephalus. The types of hydrocephalus are, with respect to site of pathology, first type is obstructive or non-communicating, second type is non-obstructive. In case of obstructive type, the site of pathology is from the formation of CSF till the exit from ventricles and most common cause being congenital aqueduct stenosis which may be associated with neural tube defect. And in case of non-obstructive, the site of pathology involves the remaining part that is basal cisterns, subarachnoid space and absorption by arachnoid villi. Most common cause in the world being subarachnoid hemorrhage and most common cause in India being TB meningitis, more common than pneumococcal meningitis. Now let's understand it further. As you can see, the obstructive type involves only the ventricles which are shaded in the blue in image shown. Since aqueduct of sylvius is considered as the narrowest part of the ventricular channel, hence the majority of the obstructive causes may be due to further narrowing or block in this part. Coming to the non-obstructive type, as you can see, the rest of the part having the CSF is considered here. The important point to be noted here is that any cause which leads to decrease in CSF absorption like TB meningitis or any cause which leads to further addition of volume in CSF like subarachnoid hemorrhage can lead to hydrocephalus. Note, in both above cases, there is disruption of absorption in arachnoid villi rather than any direct obstruction. Hence, the name non-obstructive is given. Let's understand it more further by taking this example. You can understand this by imagining a poly bag filled with water having numerous tiny holes through which very minute volume of water leaks out. Now if we add some chalk powder in it, then also some water leaks. But imagine if polythene is heated and somehow those gaps narrows and seals, then that leak of water shuts off. Somewhat same mechanism happens with arachnoid villi. Their ability to filter out the CSF decreases due to the inflammation. I hope you understand now. Let's see the clinical feature of the disease. Clinical feature includes increase in head size, separation of coronal sutures followed by other sutures, bulging of fontanelles, no papilledema since the pressure is dissipated by open fontanelles and the sunset sign. Let's see how to diagnose this pathology. The investigation. Since the fontanelles of newborn are still open, hence we can do a transcranial USG to see the pathology. Hence USG or ultrasound becomes the investigation of choice here. Now we finally come to the treatment. The treatment. Treat the underlying cause. It's very important to treat the underlying cause as to prevent the damage to the brain caused due to high pressure. The early part to be damaged in the brain is homunculus of lower limbs. Hence, patient may develop spastic paraplegia if the hydrocephalus progresses. Oral acetazolamide, which decreases CSF production. And the surgical treatment, VP shunt or ventriculoperitoneal shunt as shown in the diagram. 